Last time on Dragon Ball. The year is age 820, 36 years after Goku left to train with Oob. Earth has been blessed with peace for many years. Goku and Vegeta have disappeared from this world, leaving behind an amazing legacy. After their disappearance, Gohan finished up his book on the science of key control. Now, interest in martial arts has been rejuvenated, but the supply of masters are too small to meet the demand. Fake courses are offered around the world, with none of them knowing how to perform the feats our heroes have shown off. At the same time, the world mourns the loss of their favorite hero and movie star, Mr. Satan. We now find our heroes gathered around at the Satan estate, remembering their friend. However, not too far away, an old evil begins to brew. The remnants of the Frieza Force are hell-bent on seeking the destruction of the Saiyans. Will our heroes save the Earth once more? A new generation of warriors begins now. The Reborn Turtle in Crane School, Krillin and Tien's Heroics. Hello everyone, before we begin, I just wanna tell you guys a little bit what this is. Similar to my previous video about Goku and Vegeta's final fight, this is expanding upon something we learned from the Dragon Ball Online timeline. So most of the stuff that I'm talking about here actually does happen in the Dragon Ball Online story. I've just expanded upon it. Stuff like Mr. Satan's death and funeral and the Frieza Force attack on Earth are all taken directly from the Dragon Ball Online timeline. I also use some Dragon Ball GT images in this video. This is just because those are the oldest we see the characters. This doesn't mean that GT was canon to this version of the story, I instead tried to work Dragon Ball Super elements into this. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoy. A round ship loomed over Earth. Still far away, they could at least see the large supercontinent that resided in the globe. Whispers were heard all around. Soldiers from every race in the galaxy gathered around the monitor as a large soldier explained the situation. This was a convoy made up of soldiers loyal to Frieza. They were not around when Frieza was defeated and knew nothing of neither the Super Saiyan nor anything beyond the fact that their leader was dead, dead at the hands of someone from Earth. Some investigation led them to find the world's mightiest hero. No doubt, he was the one to have killed their emperor. As you know, Lord Frieza was killed by a resident of this planet. Our research suggests this so-called hero goes by many names. Mr. Satan, Hercule, even Mark. Regardless, we could not have taken on such a powerful foe. But now he is dead. We can finally take over the Earth in the name of the late Emperor Frieza! Cheers filled up the ship as it began to zoom for Earth. Meanwhile, on the planet, Mr. Satan's friends and family gathered at his mansion. They had just returned from the funeral service held by the king, where all of the world celebrated his life. It was a somber moment for everyone, but they could still laugh about Mr. Satan's misadventures. Even if Gohan Videl and the others knew half of them weren't true, for this one moment, they were all convinced of their legitimacy. Man, the way he convinced everyone to raise their hands, and the way he fought off that god of destruction, and not to mention the final battle he had against Cell. What a man, that Mr. Satan. Mr. Satan, best friend. I'll see him again, right? Videl smiled at Majin Buu, hugging him tightly as tears streamed from their eyes. Buu's smile widened as he looked around to see his little kids and his wife. He made his wife himself after reading Mr. Satan's dirty magazines. He was happy Mr. Satan had met her, at least. But something was wrong. Ten Shen Han shut up out of his chair. He felt something. Everyone else felt it too. Quickly, the fighters ran out of the house to look at a massive fleet of Frieza 4 ships gathering above Satan City. No way. But Frieza's army, Goku and Vegeta took care of them, right? His army was very large. This must be what was left of him in the outermost parts of the universe. We better hurry. Way ahead of ya. Trunks and Goten, who were clearly now adults, rushed towards the ship. The two had swords around their back. They had somehow been hiding them during the funeral. The two were proficient martial artists with their own school. But that is a story for another time. Gohan turned to the others. He instructed Bulma to head to West City and 18 to the King's Castle. Pan stayed back to help the citizens. The Majans would spread around the world. Surprisingly, Frieza's army was already being confronted by the Earth's royal army, but as expected, they stood no chance against the aliens. The aliens began to spread out through the world, causing havoc. 
Trunks and Goten stepped up to the plate, coming face to face with Squash, the commanding officer. The two Saiyans unsheathed their swords and began to cut down through enemies. Cameras captured everything, as the live announcer narrated the whole thing. But the enemies seemed endless. Even the two Super Saiyans couldn't take them all on. Additionally, over the years, some of the soldiers had grown to rival the power of even Frieza, similar to Abo and Kato. But the two Saiyans weren't giving up. You think you can take me on? It was a sword similar to this that a version of me used to kill your boss. What? You killed Emperor Frieza, not Mr. Satan? How do you know about him? That's right, folks. Jimmy Firecracker Jr. reporting live. It seems like West City's own Capsule Corps president is facing down against the alien invasion. West City, huh? Jimmy, shut up! A local! Crazy how these things happen. A West City local. Men, target that city! Damn it, Jimmy. Two ships sped to West City. Trunks and Goten tried to go after them, but a bunch of key blasts shot against their back. Thankfully, Gohan and the others arrived just in time. Telepathically, Gohan tells Boo to gather his kits and protect West City. They will take care of the rest. Soon, a massive battle began. The fighters had always tried to keep their powers hidden from the masses, but now it would be exposed to the whole world. A small price to pay for the safety of the planet. All over the world, fighters protected their areas. Piccolo at the lands of Korin, Yamcha and Mount Poutsu, and even Master Roshi on his island. Gohan, Goten, Trunks, Krillin, and Tien face off against the main army at Satan City. It was a great battle that would have made Goku and Vegeta proud. Their numbers were depleting quickly. Squash needed to do something. The many ships above them suddenly pointed every weapon to the ground. Was this man crazy? He'd blow up the entire world. Squash laughed maniacally. Fire! The ships shook with a loud boom as a giant laser blasted down towards Gohan, Goten, and Trunks. Tien and Krillin were further away from the radius, so they weren't hit directly. It seemed as if the lasers completely vaporized the Saiyans, and it would be only a matter of time until they drilled into the core of the planet. Squash was gone. He had rushed back to the mothership, along with his command. But he realized something. The lasers weren't moving. In fact, they were stopped. It was the Saiyans. The three Saiyans were holding up the lasers, stopping them from hitting the ground. But it was difficult. The blast radius was so large that they didn't have a way out. Krillin! Tien! We have to keep this blast from hitting Earth! You two need to do something! Krillin gulped. It had been a long time since the fate of the world rested on his shoulders. Last time, the world almost ended, but he did get a beautiful wife from it. A wife who was probably still asking the king of Earth how much he'd pay her to protect the castle from the alien attack. Tien, on the other hand, remained calm and collected. Of course, things like this made him nervous, but he trusted himself. And above that, he trusted Krillin just as much. They were once Goku's greatest rivals. Until he shot past them, they only had each other to compete with, each other to rely on. Krillin and Tien nodded with a smirk. Looking up at the ships, they stood back to back. Krillin cupped his hands as he had a thousand times before, and Tien put his hand in a triangle shape, a shape he honestly dreaded. A giant blue blast exploded from Krillin's hands, completely enveloping two ships, while a key square from Tien's hands crushed the other two. All four of them were pushed further up into the sky, exploding. Only one left, they thought. The radius from the blast had significantly lessened by the destruction of the ships, freeing Goten and Trunks. Gohan was still holding back the blast, though. Tien and Krillin turned to the final ship, as Squash trembled in fear inside of it. Tien raised his left arm, and Krillin his right. In an instant, two beams of ki shot up from their palms, twirling around one another to create an even bigger, more powerful blast of yellow and blue light. The blast pierced through the ship, and Squash screamed, exploding along with the rest of the crew. Gohan was finally able to rest, as the blast disappeared. Everyone sighed with relief, but Trunks couldn't rest just yet. Ah, West City, he said, opening his aura up and dashing towards his home. The others followed suit, but to their surprise, everything seemed to be in order. In fact, Majin Buu and his family had bellies full. Oh, that explained it. Bulma was a little horrified at the fact that Boos ate the entirety of the army that came to the city, but thankful. She even offered them capsule homes, now that Mr. Satan's place would be a little lonely. Krillin smiled up to the sky, 
Goku would have been proud of everyone that day. The fighters left. Everyone started going around the world, making sure everyone was safe, and that there were no soldiers left. They all reunited back at Kame House. They didn't expect to find a place full of news reporters and young martial artists. They were all knocking at Roshi's place. It had only been one or two days since the attack. What was going on? I told you I'm too old to take on any new students. The fighters heard the crowd even while floating from a little bit far away. Please, Turtle Hermit, train me! Is that really him? The one that trained the two men who destroyed those ships? Yeah, he's a legend! But he says he's too old to train us! Roshi looked above and saw the sea fighters. What are you doing? Come help me! Hey kids, don't go away! We'll be right back! And now back to our show! Roshi then scurried into his home as the sea fighters dropped down to the ground. Tien and Krillin tried to calm everyone down. Surprisingly, no one bothered the Saiyans too much. After all, they weren't the ones to blow up the ships. Now everyone was asking Tien and Krillin to train them. The heroes managed to push into the crowd and inside of Kame House. Krillin and Tien sighed with relief, but were met by serious-looking Master Roshi. They hadn't seen him like this in a long time, but he explained something. You two, you know, maybe you should do it. Do what, Master Roshi? Train them. Krillin and Tien were flabbergasted a little. Krillin in particular. Tien had previously had a dojo, but that was a long time ago. Roshi was serious though. He explained how he was too old for this, and that it was their fault that everyone suddenly wanted to train under him. They were masters of their own craft now. Maybe it was time for him to pass on the mantle, but were they ready? What roles do Earthling fighters serve in a world full of Majins and Saiyans? That's exactly the question I want you to answer. The lot of you far surpassed me in power long ago. And all of us Earthlings were eclipsed by Goku and the Saiyans. But even still, through every fight, you two didn't let it down your spirits. Krillin, you went to Namek with him. Tien, you told me you saved Gohan from Boo once. Think about what this means and how you could teach these values to the next generation of human martial artists. Tien and Krillin looked to one another, then at Gohan, Trunks, and Goten. Krillin, you taught me so much when I was just a kid. I don't know where I'd be without you. We owe Goten Six Volleyball Attack to you, Tien. We couldn't have learned it without you. You invented it. There was a mutual understanding in the room. They were going to do it. He'd have to tell a team, though. The two humans nodded and braced themselves to welcome the crowd, stepping outside to a cheering lot. Roshi stood between them with his hands on their back, pushing them forward. I am too old, but these two have many years ahead of them. I present to you Krillin, the head of the new Turtle-style martial arts school, and Ten Shinhan, leader of the new Crane School of Martial Arts. The applause became even louder. They explained that they had just decided this, and that they would be announcing more soon. So please be on the lookout for it. As night fell, the crowd dissipated, and the Saiyans left. 18 eventually arrived at Kame House, and was surprised by the news. Krillin totally expected her to ask how much they would make off of this, but she didn't. She was instead very supportive of her husband. She did want some part in it, maybe a little compensation. But regardless, she had never seen him this happy. Not in a long time at least. She knew this was what he wanted. Gohan had agreed to help fund the formation of the schools. After all, his book would be used to instruct the new generation. Videl was more than glad to use some of her inheritance to form the new generation of warriors, as her father would have wanted. But over the next few days, the humans brainstormed just exactly what they wanted to achieve from this, what they wanted to pass on, and what humans could do on the battlefield. Reminiscing upon old good times with Goku, the two came to their individual conclusions. Krillin believed that humans should focus on supporting their allies, just as he had done for many years. The Solar Flare, Kians, and many more worked so much better when used while helping others. Healing, too, was something he could learn and teach. He believed that there was nothing to be ashamed of in this regard. Though, of course, he would teach his students to fight on their own as well. Meanwhile, Tien meditated outside by himself. Chaozu was probably worried about him, but busy with his farm work. He'd have to stop by and give him the good news. Tien was a little sad, remembering the time his friend had to sacrifice himself against Nappa, and how Tien himself lost his life while trying to stop him with the Kikoho. The Kikoho. Tri-beam. Ki Blast Cannon. Such a great technique. It can even stop a foe much more powerful than himself, such as the time with Boo or Cell. 
That's it! Tien opened his eyes. The role humans had, in his view of things, was that of powerful key attacks. He would create his school around this philosophy. Key control overall could be something that, though difficult to master, could become a great asset to humans who may have less physical strength overall. It was decided. Krillin! Ten Shin Han! The two yelled for each other. Just as Krillin opened the door to step outside, the fighters looked at each other in the eyes, with determination, ready to take on this new challenge, not only together, but as rivals. I've got it figured out. So do I. Now we just need to find the location for our schools. The next few days, the two scoured the lands to find a good place. Eventually, the two came upon good spots. Krillin decided on Mount Poutsu in honor of his late friend, Goku, to keep his memory alive and perhaps inspire others with this scenery. Tien, on the other hand, looked to Mount Frypan, now renamed Mountain of Refreshing Scenery. Tien chose this because he was relatively close to Kame House. This way, he'd remember the man that saw good in him when no one else did. He made it a point to look for trouble kids to train so they would never go down the path he once did. And, of course, he had Chiaotzu with him. Students began to pour in. The two masters were very strict about who they would allow to train under them, and had to turn down many, but they ended up with a sizable first class. At the ceremony held in the city between the two schools, Gohan and Videl explained that both Goku and Mr. Satan would have been proud of all these new martial artists. Do the masters have anything to say before they begin this new adventure? Krillin and Tien faced one another, shaking hands. Krillin smirked, and so did Tien. They were both thinking the same thing. We'll, we'll see, see you, you at, at the, the World, World Tournament. Tournament! And so, a new generation of human warriors was born. Krillin and Tien taught kids for many, many years. And even after they passed away and met up with Goku in Otherworld, their memories and legacy lived on in the new Turtle-style school and the new Crane school. Now it's up to the new generation of warriors to make their own mark in the Dragon World. Thank you guys for watching, I hope you enjoyed. Be sure to like, share, comment, and subscribe, and click the bell icon so you get notified when I upload new videos. Also, I just launched a Patreon. There's a few tiers there, uh, but I'm still working all the specifics out, so if you guys have any ideas for tiers and rewards, be sure to tell me. But you know, if you find it in your heart that you can spare a few bucks and you want to support the content you love, I will be more than thankful. After all, YouTube revenue is being kind of weird because of the pandemic and stuff like that. It's just, it's just nuts right now. Patreon link in the description below. Shout out to these guys who answered the Dragon Ball question of the week last week. The Dragon Ball question of the week this week is... Who would you train under? Ten Shinhan or Krillin? Personally, I think I would go for Krillin, just because he's my favorite character out of the two. But Ten Shinhan teaching those key attacks does sound really cool. Be sure to leave your answer in the comments down below with the hashtag DBQ, and you may be shouted out in the next video this way. Let's start a discussion. Anyways, until we meet again. See ya! Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to Smugstick, unless you want to be destroyed. Lord Beerus, that's hardly fair. But also, don't forget to click the bell icon to get notified when he uploads new videos.